Oh my gosh, what a cozy vibe we have going on in here. Okay. That's the whole goal. I'm gonna move this stool so it's not upstaging me. I hate to play second fiddle to a stool. Hello, um, so this is, we, we've got some stand-up comedy for you guys. How many people have been here for like a lot of the day? A couple people. One person lying on the floor. One, <laughs> one person boldly sitting upright as if that the posture will keep you awake. Yeah, totally. And you guys have not been here all day, but you're just getting, you're cozy as hell. Perfect, that's, that's the vibe we're trying to create. So like, the, my name's Josh, I'm, uh, I'm your first comedian, I'm hosting this, I put together this lineup. It's so many super fun people that I love to watch perform, uh, and that's why I, I invited them here to join us late at night. Uh, the jokes will start momentarily. This is just an explanation. I'm not like, I'm crushing. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a rules comedian. I just lay out premises and then, and then I just drop the mic and I'm gone. Welcome. So the, the idea here, who's, is anybody, can, can people drink? Are people drinking in here? Yeah, there we go. Well, yeah, I don't think it's a secret. I think they're selling it out in the front. It would be like mega fucked up if they sold it in the front and you brought it in and they're like, I don't think so. And just <laughs> mutumboed it out of your hands. No, thank you. Good, okay, so the premise of the show, are you guys familiar with the, the party game Never Have I Ever? Yeah. yeah, it's kind of a late late night drinking game. So all the comics are going to, at various uh, points in their set, they'll, they'll issue a Never Have I Ever. And if you have done the thing that they haven't done, you take a sip. That's the whole rule. You don't have to pound the whole drink. <laughs> We're not undergraduates trying to prove we've drank before. So you can just drink as much or as little as you want. Or if you're not a drinker, then don't. I'm not trying to push anybody off the wagon tonight. <laughs> Just like, I laid out a premise, obey it. Um, so let's start here. I'm, I'm like not a lot of fun, so I think maybe people will drink when I say this, but I never have I ever, um, never have I ever smoked a cigarette. That's a real thing about me, yeah. I'm, again, I've never had fun. Um, I'm, I'm just like a, a, like a very, like I'm a Pippi Longstocking of a person. That's, I've lived in New York eight years, and I've come to realize nobody here likes it when you think things are gonna be okay. <laughs> Everybody in this city loves a pessimist. Everybody loves a guy wearing a black leather jacket, smoking a cigarette, like we were all born just to die. <laughs> Flicks the lit button a rat's face, life is pain, little buddy, learn it. <laughs> People in New York see that dude, they're like, that guy gets it, that's a cool guy right there. He probably knows why the Velvet Underground is a good band, he can, probably taste the difference between different kinds of beer instead of just going mm, very beery and putting it down forever the way that I do. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm just sitting by myself drinking a milkshake. Like, can you believe there's a sunset every day? Wow. <laughs> People meet me, they're like, dude, you're gonna die falling off a Ferris wheel trying to catch a shooting star, you redheaded orphan of a man. How are you the only adult Jew I've ever met who seems like he still believes in Santa Claus? What's your deal? <laughs> what made you this way? You guys are good. You guys are a lovely comedy audience for kind of being like several different uh, orgies of people in here. You guys, you guys look like you all, should, like this and that pod, look like they showed up to an orgy and were just like, oh fuck, we had a big dinner. <laughs> you guys wanna just throw on grays and, <laughs> I know it's a rerun, but they're so rewatchable. Um, I am, uh, I'm a married person, that's very exciting for me. My, it's true, my, thank you. Couple gentle applauses. Um, <laughs> my wife is very smart, which I love and admire about her. I'm medium smart. Like, yeah, right, medium, are you medium smart? Absolutely, what would you say is the most, like what's the top of your smarts? And this is not for me to make fun of you, this is for me to make fun of me. Yeah, so you, Multiplication, but to nine, and t 10. <laughs> Once you hit 10, it gets briefly easier again. <laughs> multiplying by 10, you're like, I know how to put a zero on the back of that. <laughs> Nobody's m multiplying by 10 <laughs> over my head. <laughs> no, but that's it, right? That's real, medium smart. I feel like, y are you good like when you're out to dinner and a bunch of people are like, I don't know how to do the tip. You're like, I got this shit. <laughs> no, okay, that's fine too. Okay, yeah, very medium. <laughs> I like sometimes will go to a museum for fun. That's the smartest thing about me. I'm not one of those dumb husbands, right? 
Like those, uh, the guys you see in detergent commercials <laughs> just running into the house like, the kids are covered in soil and I ain't going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. I'm medium smart. My wife is very smart. And the gap is widening by the day. I um, Every night at bedtime, we read. My wife and I, we read in bed side by side for half an hour because I still got it. And <laughs> <laughs> yep. And every night but at bedtime, my wife reads a book, not the same book. It's not like a religious thing. She like reads a book, and then she finishes it, and then she starts a new... I don't know I'm explaining what books are to you guys. You all <laughs> have seen or heard of books. You're at a WNYC event. If you haven't, what brought you here? <laughs> um, whatever. My wife reads a book is the point. And the whole time that my wife is, is reading a book, I will scroll ceaselessly, aimlessly through Twitter on my phone, which is the not reading of reading. <laughs> So every night at bedtime, my wife gets 30 minutes smarter, more cultured, more empathetic. And I grow 30 minutes furious at things I can't control and don't understand. <laughs> every night before she turns her light off, my wife looks at me and says something like, Josh, I just read the most beautiful passage about what it means to live a life of purpose and wonder. <laughs> then it's lights off, eyes closed, day over for her. But I'm still rocking and rolling. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm looking at my phone like, well, I just read that Elon Musk invented a $15 million laser that turns hats into visors. Fucking scissors do that. What am I missing? <laughs> and then she drifts off into a blissful slumber while I'm just staring at the ceiling, awake and furious. Like, does it also turn jeans into jorts or is that a separate laser? <laughs> I will say this. Let's do this. Um, this is a medium smart thing about me. Uh, here, well, I'll do another Never Have I Ever. Never have I ever read a single word that James Joyce wrote. And if you also haven't, take a drink. Yeah. If you have, then stay sober. Yeah, right on. I have 20 glasses because I lived in T.C. and T had, a, had a drink for every uh, hour they did a show. Okay. <laughs> We've all had different experiences. <laughs> Sure. Um, I love it. Do, uh, so Wait, so if you have read James Joyce, you drink. Sorry, that's what I meant. If you haven't, like I have. Yeah, you have. What have you read? Uh, the Portrait of an Artist. Portrait of an Artist. That's, you're, you're a regular Pete Buttigieg in here. <laughs> that, that, that's like a very public radio zing, isn't it? <laughs> um, I, let's, do, let's talk about this. I, um... Thank you. I generally, when I say a word, I try to know how it sounds. <laughs> uh, I was burned too many times in my youth. Um, okay, I let me. I'm gonna tell you guys this, and then I'm gonna bring up your next comedian. How does that sound? Good. Good. Oh, you guys are such sweethearts. Well, we like you. I, I'll be back, okay. and you're gonna like all the other people. I promise. I can vouch for them all. They're all close personal friends and artists whom I admire greatly. Uh, and that said, I'm going to tell you this before I, before I skedaddle. That's how I leave. Um, <laughs> I am, I'm going to be vulnerable up here for a moment because I'm an artist. Uh, I'm very jealous of the relationships my female friends have with their hairdressers. <laughs> That's vulnerable of me to admit. I um. Every time a, a, a woman that I'm friends with gets their haircut, they post a picture on Instagram of that, of it's her with the, uh, the hairdresser in front of the salon like they just bought it together. <laughs> and there's that day's newspaper to prove it's not a hashtag TBT, right? It's that day, fresh. And then there's always a very lovely, warm caption, very encouraging, very supportive of local business, right? It'll say something like, thanks to Becca at Curls Before Wine Salon. Um, for the fresh cut and color, hashtag new do, new you. That's so nice, right? And then the hairdresser comments underneath, like, gorgeous. Like, like you wouldn't say that. Like, you just did it. Of course you think it's good. <laughs> That's a very different relationship than I have with my hair care provider. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I've gone to the same guy for two years, and I don't know his name, because he won't tell it to me. Um, <laughs> He doesn't know my name because he doesn't give a shit. He doesn't. And why would he? I walk in mostly forehead. I tell him, make me all the way forehead. <laughs> and that's what he does. 
That's our whole deal. I go to a Russian barber shop. I'm pretty sure it's a front for uranium mine. <laughs> Even if I wanted to post it on, in, on Instagram, I wouldn't know what it's called. I don't know what it's called. <laughs> I've been going there two years. I have no idea the name of the barber shop. All I know is I was walking by one day. My hair was getting a little shaggy. And uh, I saw one of those swirling poles. And I opened the door. And a guy in the back went, yes, we do. And I walked in. And they've been cutting my hair for two years. <laughs> Cost me $20. I'm pretty sure if I gave him another 20 he would just cut the next guy's head off. Like, this is what you ask for, yes? <laughs> this is what money is for. Well, guys, this has been so much fun. I think you're going to have a really lovely time tonight. Um, before we go, before I go, um, I will say, uh, ne this is, hmm, that's too gendered and unfair. I will say, never, never have I ever invited the guy who cuts my hair to a social event. And if you have done that, you drank. The person who cuts your hair, you have. Oh my gosh, what event? Every birthday party. Every birthday party. Oh, I'm so envious. <laughs> anybody else? Anybody, did, has anybody invited the person that cut their hair to their wedding, not to cut their hair before the wedding? No. Okay, good. <laughs> I was just worried I'd closed myself off to love and friendship. Um, <laughs> You guys are wonderful. Okay, I want you guys, I know it's, it's, a very, it's late at night. I know many of you are borderline asleep. Um, but I want you guys to give all your enthusiasm and attention and energy for your next comedian. And all the, there's, there's five comedians you're going to see, and they're all wonderful.